Alright guys, so today's topic is lean bulking. Um, so before we actually get into uh, what lean bulking is, there's some questions that we have to answer about lean bulking. So this is what I came up with for my list of questions. Um, I think these should all be answered to accurately um, describe what lean bulking is and uh, all things that relate to lean bulking. So first off, what is it? When should you do it and who should do it? The benefits and drawbacks. How do you determine progress? Like how do you gauge your progress on the scale and the mirror? Dirty versus a lean bulk and how do you actually do it and set the lean bulk into place? So the first question is, what is lean bulking? I summarized it up into four um, little categories. So lean bulking is slightly gaining weight over time, being in a caloric surplus of 100 to 250 calories over your maintenance. So let's say if your maintenance is 3,000 calories, you'd be eating between 3,100 and 3,250. Um, slight weight gain um, is hard to describe because for individuals who have been training for a very long time, like uh, like 30 year old natural bodybuilders, their slight gain is really, really slight because they can't gain that much muscle because they already have almost reached their genetic potential. Uh, but if you're like a newbie, then your lean bulking could be five pounds a month. And if you're an older individual who's been in the game for a long time, it could only be up one pound a month. So it's slight weight gain for like a different factors that it's like your training, um, your size and your genetics. Uh, next thing is minimal fat gain. So with that slight weight gain, um, the goal is to make your fat gain as little as possible, obviously, because that's why it's called lean bulking. Um, and lastly, you try to maximize your muscle gain. In most uh, human bodies with decent genetics, average genetics, your body can gain between 0.3 and to 0.6 pounds of lean, uh, lean dry muscle a week, naturally. Um, that if everything is uh, like your training, your recovery, and your nutrition is all on point, that's the maximum you can gain. So, yeah, that's uh, what it is. And next, we'll be going over who it's for and uh, who should do it and why you should do it. So the next question we got was uh, when you should actually start lean bulking. And I made that into about uh, four categories as well. Uh, after a reverse diet, I think that's what I did, and I think that's the smartest way to do it. So it's your metabolism is nice and built up, so you can just continue to raise your calories into a lean bulking phase. Uh, if you don't like to reverse diet, in the second category, you can just do it after your diet. Just say if you're dieting on 2,000 calories, you can just jump up to 2,750, depending on how much your deficit was. Um, if you're looking to put on size and keep your body fat percentage uh, low, you will gain body fat percentage. Like, no matter what, if you're putting on any size and you're natural, <clears throat> a lot of people aren't natural. Uh, I'll get into that in another video of how fake the fitness industry is. But <clears throat> uh, another thing I had consideration, so body types. If you are skinny fat, I would uh, recommend that you start a lean bulk. Because a lot of people who are skinny fat decide they should cut, and they end up cutting and looking horrible. Uh, might as well put some muscle on, and you're not going to increase your body fat percentage that much. <clears throat> if you're, oh, body types like this. So if you are, a lot of people don't know this, but the leaner you are, the more muscle you can put on, the less fat you'll put on. So I usually recommend... Uh, to my clients and just a personal philosophy that I do, I usually get down at least when I diet, I diet hardcore and I get down to like five, six percent body fat. So when I get to that percentage, then I start my reverse, like if I'm done with the competition, because your body will put on more muscle than more fat. But if you get up to those higher body fat percentages, like 
if you're twenty percent body fat and you're lean bulking, you're you're putting on you're still put your body will put on more fat than muscle. It's just how the body works. Um, and if anybody's wondering where I get any of my like research and information from, majority comes from uh, 3D Muscle Journey or 3D MJ with uh, Eric Helms and Alberto Nunez and all those people and just tons of research and trial and error because that's honestly one of the most important things. And the next question, we'll go over that in just a second. So here we got the drawbacks and benefits uh, question. Um, so the pros I came up with is obviously muscle gain. You're going to be putting on muscle when you're lean bulking. You get to stay leaner. Um, like, for example, me, I started my reverse diet at about 160, 163 and probably around 6% body fat-ish. I am now 12 weeks into that. I stopped reverse dieting after eight, so four weeks into my actual bulk. Um, but reverse dieting is basically lean bulking. Um, and now I am around 170-ish and probably 8% body fat. Just maybe like seven and a half, eight percent body fat. So yeah, I've gained uh, maybe a percentage or two of body fat, but I've both put on uh, like seven, eight pounds. So um, strength increase. Another thing that I could say from personal experience, uh, my bench has gone up over those 12 weeks. My bench press went from 315 uh, by one to just about 335, probably 340 next week. Um, another pro is you get to have a longer off season, or if you're not a bodybuilder, a longer bulk or uh, gaining phase. Uh, because if you dirty bulk, which I'll get to in a couple questions, then you're going to want to do these things called mini cutting, which is basically going into a diet phase. After you, I've seen people gain like 20 pounds after a show and then they end up mini cutting two weeks later and it's just spinning your wheels and you're not actually making any progress. Uh, anyways, the cons that I came up with are it's a very slow process. I mean, if you've ever went to the store and got like 99% lean steak, like it's very... It's very like big I and mean, that's putting on like a pound of muscle is like a lot of mass so it's a slow it's a slow process another thing people don't realize it's not a yolo diet you could like when people are say they're bulking uh you don't just get to eat pop tarts and donuts and pizza every day that's i mean you could but you'd have to fit that in your macros which would be very very difficult so on to the next question Alright guys, next question on progress checks and gauging your progress. So I found these four categories that I like to use. The scale, um, I like to step on it one to two times weekly in the morning. Um, why only one to two times? Because when you're bulking, or like I, I like to call it gaining, like lean gaining, because bulking just sounds fatty. <laughs> um, one to two times weekly because your weight will fluctuate a lot depending on what you eat in the day. And when you're dieting, it really doesn't fluctuate an extreme amount unless you have a ton of sodium. But for uh, for example, if I eat really clean one day when I'm bulking and literally just absolute clean food and lots of vegetables, I'll weigh way heavier the next day compared to if I just had like some dirtier foods um, that are less voluminous and less like literal weight like mass for example if I ate like a massive salad that weighed like three pounds or if I was to eat uh, like a bagel that was like four ounces like I'd weigh heavier uh, after the salad um, and also what I do to gauge my weight is just make sure because weight gain is not linear I think it's honestly less linear uh, then weight losses like weight loss you can it's pretty linear you can predict a decent amount when you're dieting but just another example like i've been like 163 in a week and then up to like 169 in a week and my diet didn't change so 
I like just to make sure it's not going up by too much. Um, I like to see around half a poundish a week uh, from between 0.3 and 0.6 actually. That natural genetic potential I look for. So say this week I weighed in two times and I was like 170 and 171. And then next week I was like 171, 172, maybe 172.5. Uh, okay, no. If I was 170 or in like 171, and if I was like 171 to 172, I'd be cool with that. Um, the mirror, um, you can use that as progress. I mean, you'll be able to tell if you're gaining a significant amount of fat, but the scale will be able to tell you that. Um, progress pictures are a big thing. I like to take mine in the same lighting under the same circumstances. Um, that's why I always use the same lighting in my Instagram pictures because it tells me uh, the progress that I'm making. Um, and it can show if you're putting on muscle or putting on too much fat. Another big thing is strength. Um, you can be very sure you're adding muscle if your strength and your lifts are going up. So if you're squatting 225 and now three weeks later you're squatting 245, you can bet you put on some muscle. Alright guys, next question. Alright guys, now for the elusive dirty versus lean bulk. So, I found, but these are pros and cons for both, I guess more cons for dirty, but. So when you dirty bulk, that's basically just eating whatever you want. Um, and gaining weight. Obviously it's gonna be more fun because you can literally eat whatever you want. You will actually maximize your muscle uh, if you're getting your protein and stuff because let's say your body can put on half pound and you're putting on two pounds you're gonna maximize your muscle. Um, you get fat really really fast. I'll throw a picture of my previous self up in here and yeah, I got fat really fast. That was a couple years ago. Uh, you get really strong. Uh, another example, when I was dirty balked, I was strong as hell. Like, you look at, I think Chris Jones, I think he has a segment on his channel called, like, Fat Jones, and he got up to, like, 230, <laughs> and he was humongous and strong. But, but your off-season is also really short, so that kind of sucks because you don't need to cut faster because you get too fat. Okay, now lean bulk. You get to stay lean, which is enjoyable. Um, you get a gain, you get to gain muscle, but not as fast as the dirty bulk. But you actually get to have a long gaining phase. So let's have two scenarios here. Person A is a dirty bulker. Person B is a lean bulker. They both start at 200 pounds, and after six months, or actually we'll say after one month, dirty bulker is up to 220 and lean bulker is up to 204. This guy will want to di start dieting because he's fat. This guy will be able to continue his lean bulk for a couple more months before he starts to diet. Therefore, person B, the lean bulker, will gain more muscle. That's what I think of it. Alright guys, on to the final question. Alright guys, Final question here is how do you actually implement a lean bulk into your diet? So, the three macro breakdowns that I like to see. Protein is at 1 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. So if you are a 200 pound male, that would be between 200 grams and 300 grams. Fat, I like to see 20 to 25 percent of the calories. So if you're eating, whatever, like 3,000 calories a day, then you should be having do the math here. Three thousand times point two six hundred and three thousand times point two five. You should be having between six hundred to seven fifty calories from fat a day. And then carbs will fill the remaining calories left. Um, so if you're lean bulking at three thousand calories and you're that two hundred pound male, whatever, say two hundred grams of protein uh, 600 calories worth of fat, which is roughly like 60 or 50 grams, between 50 and 60. 
and so your carbs would fill the rest. And if you ever stall on your lean bulk, I would recommend increasing your carbs slowly, like, I don't know, 10 to 20 grams, <clears throat> because there's a process called de novo genesis, um, which basically means carbs have to go through a long process in the body, and it burns a lot of energy, to store carbs as fat. When fat, fat actually does convert right into fat cells, uh, while well, carbs have to go into muscle glycogen if you're depleted, um, and things like that. And you can burn carbs really fast. Um, yeah. So, basically guys, increase your carbs if you're stalled, um, just because you won't store fat as easily um, as you will uh, store fat, like fat macro. So right now I'm going to throw a couple pictures on the screen. One was uh, me dirty bulking, and then two is me uh, currently today. And as you can see, I'm very lean right now. Uh, I actually still have glute striations. And I'm at about 8% body fat, I would say. And I'm more than halfway done with my bulk. I put on almost almost 10 pounds in three months. A lot of it's water weight and stuff. But yeah, guys, if you have any more questions um, on lean bulking, make sure to talk to me. I'll try to make it a little bit more clear. All my videos like this are... Try to be simplified as possible because they can get really, really uh, confusing and hard to understand. Like that de novo genesis and th stuff like that is really hard to explain and understand. Um, and it doesn't really matter to be honest as long as you know what you're doing um, from like the little tips and stuff I'm telling you. Um, I've got a few more ideas because I like doing these uh, informative video talks with you guys. But if you have any questions about lean bulking, make sure to hit me up on Eric or on uh, Instagram at Ericson.noah, or just leave a comment below. See you guys.